Um, but without, without further ado, um, I'm going to hand over to Sifian. I've known Sifian for years. Um, Sifian's doing brilliant work in this space. Um, and he's going to tell you about the data you need to know about, but also opportunities to connect um, with the wider community. So good morning, Sifian. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me. I'm going to do my absolute level best to try and stick with 10 minutes because that's always a challenge for me. When we were thinking and when I was looking at the title, Building a Global Majority Workforce and Pipeline, uh, you get slightly confused and thrown by that if you're a leader in education within the system at the moment because there's nothing about the majority part that resonates because it's so drummed into us uh, that we're a minority. Uh, yesterday, uh, I, look, I watched an interview in the American, kind of one of those committee hearings, and just talk, heard live in a Congress session, kind of with the level of racism towards Arab Americans, uh, and default by being Arab, it equates to X, Y, and Z. And the reason that that resonated was because actually hate is constantly, unfortunately, on the rise both racism in its purest form, but also Islamophobia in the way we're seeing Islamophobia and the rise of Islamophobia, the rise of anti-Semitism. The rise of these religious hates is huge. Sadly for Islamophobia, nobody wants to actually address the word Islamophobia. The government, uh, what was supposedly a left-leaning, uh, a, a people's uh, kind of party in Labour, again struggled to use the word Islamophobia because actually nobody wants to recognize that there is directed hate towards Muslims because they are Muslim. And we're seeing that. We're seeing the aftermath of Southport uh, and we're seeing that thousands and thousands of young people, school-age children, with families, with parents, are going out and thinking it's acceptable uh, to chant certain chants, to throw things at mosques, to attack taxi drivers, to attack restaurants, and all sorts of things that we saw over the summer that was quite upsetting for all of us. But actually, it's a reality of a picture that exists within our country. And it's a picture that too often we pretend doesn't exist. It's a picture that we pretend hasn't existed. Because it makes us more comfortable saying, actually, we don't have a problem when we clearly do have a problem. We've always had a problem. We, we've just got better and better at hiding the problem, better at masking the problem. Because actually, we're scared to confront the problem. And the longer we leave this lack of confrontation, the bigger the problem gets. If I'm thinking of our representation in the system, uh, when you have a new education secretary, they normally have a reception. And our education secretary had a reception. Uh, and it was like the receptions before and the receptions before and the receptions before, because there was no very, very little representation of black and ethnic minority leaders uh, within the system, within the sector at that reception. The reception is really, we're going to invite you. We're going to invite the most important people in the sector and we're going to show you that we believe you're important by getting you around us at the very start of our mission. And we want you to be a part of this journey. But actually, if you look at those on that journey, there's not many that look like me. But actually, I'm one of those troublemakers. So I wrote to them before the event and I said, I am almost certain that there will be lack of representation. Therefore, I am saying I am not invited, and I accept I'm not invited, but I am saying I exist. I am in the system. I am a leader in the system. I'm a MAT leader, uh, and there's not many MAT leaders that come from my background. I am a teaching school leader. Actually, now I'm in a very exclusive club. There's not many that are uh, from my background in that sector. I'm an ITT leader, so I've got skits, multiple skits, and they're outstanding. Now I'm actually an exclusive company. It's only me now with that MAP directorship and the directorship of an ITT provision. I actually lead your behavior hub, your attendance hub, but actually it doesn't really matter what you do 
because actually if you're not in the club, you're not in the club. And there's reasons why you're not in the club. And often the reasons are that if you look different, you are different. And if you are different, you're not in the inn. And that process continues. You, we, we look at our very recent, uh, the number of expert groups that are coming out from various organizations. And the expert groups are the same experts that were the experts before, just being recycled as the new experts. But again, the common feature is that the lack of diversity in those expert groups uh, in, in the powers of government tend to be people that are typically white British, typically male. Uh, but white British tends to be the key focus. So we've still got lots of work to do. And I think that part is really, really important for us to recognize. I'm really pleased that actually we started on a journey at Chilton Learning Trust, which was a five-year plan, knowing five years ago that we had a lack of representation at the very top of our organization. Five years on, that journey was always going to be about meritocracy. It was about making sure that the best people get seen. And for people to be seen, we knew we had to train people that are the eyes that are looking. The eyes that are looking need to be able to see the talent that exists. But we also need to train and develop the talent that exists to make sure that it has the ability to compete with everybody else on a fair, equal playing field. And what we're seeing now is our last couple of headships from a minority background and or global majority background, I should say. If I look at our last few deputy headships, again, global majority background, not because we went out saying we need someone from the global majority, but because we created a fair playing platform for everyone and we allowed to grow and develop that talent that we saw and that rising talent is now coming through our ranks. And that's what it's about, making sure this notion that we don't exist, this notion that we're not out there is ludicrous. It's stupid. Some of the highest performing schools in this country by P8, the vast majority, if you look at the top 10, the vast majority of those schools are schools that serve uh, the global majority, ethnic minority children. If you look at those schools again in more detail, the number of people that are from a minority background teaching those core subjects especially are from a minority global majority background. So actually, if some of the best teachers in the country in some of the best schools in the country and the children they serve are from these backgrounds. But we're constantly downtrodden and we're constantly told that actually, you know what, we, it's an act of charity to give us a place at the table. When the children are performing so well, how do we say to the kids that are performing the best in the country that you're so good and you can be anything, but what you can't be? is one of us on this side of the table. You can't be a teacher, but you can be anything else. You can be a doctor, you can be an astronaut because you're the brightest kids in the country, but you can't be that. And that brings me on to my last point, which is for us, the focus that became, how do we impact and how do we get that talent that exists out there? It was through networking, creating networks and networks are powerful and networks are the way forward. And it gives me a huge honor to say, that we started off six years ago with a dinner for 20 people. And we said, we're going to call this the Racial Equity Network Dinner, REND, hashtag REND. And if you haven't tweeted today, well, tweet now with hashtag REND. And we said that Racial Equity Network, that networking part is really important. We're going to get people who want to recruit diverse talent, and we're going to get that talent in the same room. And we're going to create networks. So actually, that's how people were being recruited, based on who they knew their networks. And this year, we've got it happening in Birmingham, nearly sold out to 400 seats. We're going to have it in Luton, 500 seats sold out. We're going to have it in London, nearly sold out. We're going to have it in Manchester. I've got people calling me about it in other parts of Britain. And that's a movement that's not about an organization. That ain't about Chilton, ain't about no one. It's about people from racially... Uh, 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 people from racially minoritized minor, minority communities or the global majority communities being on a platform where they can network with educators and showcase their talent and be able to be seen. And I'm so proud that we've been a part of that journey. I hope that what you hear from other speakers today only reinforces the power of networking, reinforces the power of us making sure that we inspire, we support, we develop, 
all of those that are in our networks, all of those that are in the system, because so many people in the system, and I know this as a Muslim in the system in the last year, seeing the news unfold and seeing how schools have responded, it has been a really dark place. It's been a lonely place being a Muslim in the system. And it's, a, it's been a lonely place for many years, being black in the system, being Asian in the system and being a minority in the system. And today for us, it's about focusing on building that global majority workforce, working in partnership, developing those networks and empowering people. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. I wrote down, I exist, I am here. We exist, we are here. That's such a powerful reminder, isn't it? And you talked about the club, Surf, about the people who are in the club, and it's often a white boys' club or a white men and women's club. Um, do we want to be in the club or do we want to create our own club? Like, what's 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 the ultimate vision here about a more integrated, more representative system? I, I think what we've shown in the last year, I think through especially through Rend, through the brilliant organisations that we have on this call, call. I know there's friends from. Black Men Teach that I've worked with, Bay Med are here, so many other brilliant organizations are here. I would do some work with Fig Tree and the others. And well, we've got a club. We, we, do, we don't need to join a club. Uh, and you know what? The, the doors to the club were shut for so long that we had to set up our own club. And you know what? If I follow that an analogy, you know what? We weren't in the Premier League and we wanted to be in the Premier League. But what we did is we set up a grassroots club and that club's going up the leagues. It's getting recognised, it's getting seen. Even if they don't want us recognised, even if they don't want us seen, people are noticing us, people are noticing the movements, and people are noticing the change, and they're noticing the difference. And we're here to stay, and they will see the impact that we have. And it's a positive impact that will change and develop education in this country. And we just wish that actually, now that we have our own club, we at least get recognised for being brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've been to a couple of the Luton dinners and they are fabulous. And it's great to see it now spawning around the country. Um, I'm booked for London, I'm booked for Birmingham. And we've already got an invitation in the chat about doing one in the West Country. If we need it anywhere in the country, we definitely need it in the patch where Paula and I are serving. Um, so I'll, I'll follow up with the people who are suggesting that um, in, in my region. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for uh, the opening publication, Sophie. And thanks for all the brilliant work you're doing with colleagues um, in the system. 